Tonight, the King 5 investigators reveal what can happen to special education students who are physically restrained or isolated in closet-like rooms even just a few times. King 5 Susanna Frame is here with the latest in her series, Back of the Class. Greg and Lori, we found children suffering from anxiety, depression, and increased aggression, all stemming from isolation and restraints used at school. And in Seattle, we've discovered one elementary school with a pattern of putting their hands on kids with serious consequences for the students. Before third grade, Isaac, who has autism, was at the top of his class academically. He was popular, had lots of friends and interests, and he liked going to school. Since then, none of that is true. It's been four years since third grade, the year that changed Isaac's life, but the experience still haunts him. I used to actually get out and do a lot of stuff, now i kind of more of a hermit play Minecraft all day or other video games, um, stick inside, don't really leave the house much. What happened when Isaac was nine? He was transferred to BF Day Elementary in Seattle's Fremont neighborhood. Records show that was disastrous. Isaac was physically restrained repeatedly there for dangerous behaviors such as striking staff and stepping in front of a car. And I actually walked into a situation where the principal by himself was restraining my son. But Isaac's mom, Heidi Stuber, says her son was restrained for many other offenses that weren't dangerous. For really minor things like making a mean face or one time he hit a door, another time he got frustrated and threw a pencil on the ground. A UW psychologist said the repeated physical interventions caused isolation from peers, intense anxiety and trauma. Isaac is 13 now and suffers from depression. To this day, he's afraid of school and doesn't want to talk about what happened. What do you remember about being restrained? Um, nothing much. Try to block, block those memories out and not talk about them. If you don't mind, I'd prefer not to talk about that. And it's still this bad. It's ruined my son's life, and I don't know if he'll graduate from high school, and we have done everything right. That's how bad it is. The Stubers aren't alone. Soon after Isaac left BF Day, 10 other special ed families sent this letter to the state asking for help, citing a significant and deeply troubling increase in the use of physical restraint and isolation at the school. My name's Heidi Stuber. In 2015, Heidi Stuber testified before legislators in Olympia, urging them to pass a bill to limit the use of isolation and restraint. When I asked Isaac what he wanted me to tell you, he said, just tell them that putting hands on makes everything worse. I get scared, I get more mad, and I'm afraid of school and I don't want to go. It worked. On May 9th, 2015, Governor Inslee signed the bill into law. Isaac was front and center to witness it. Now, restraint and isolation can only be used in a dire emergency when serious harm is imminent. We were very proud that that was signed into law. After a new law and a lawsuit filed by Isaac's family that cost <laughs> Seattle Public Schools thousands of dollars, did BF Day learn or change their ways? It's still going on. This school year, Gina Bunster walked into her son's basement classroom at BF Day and witnessed her son Alec, six years old and weighing 40 pounds, being restrained not once, but on two separate occasions by the special ed teacher. He was being held this way. Alec, who also has autism, was restrained for running out of the room. The parents aren't sure how many times it happened. They do know their son was acting differently, anxiety-ridden, and not wanting to go to school. I'm livid about what they did. There was something that changed. The, the love for learning became quashed in him. And it sounds like I didn't even want, he didn't want to go to school. He didn't want to even leave the house. He wanted to stay home. The new law also mandates schools report incidents of restraint and isolation to the state, and BF Day stands out. In the last school year, most Seattle public schools reported zero to few events, not BF Day. They documented 71. In the entire district, only Northgate and Gatewood Elementary Schools had more. There's no question in any of the professional fields that the use of restraint and isolation is damaging to children. Jeanette Cohen is a special ed attorney and one of the region's foremost authorities on children with disabilities. Even one or two times of use of physical restraint 
can cause trauma. And if that's true, then why are we doing it? Heidi Stuber isn't sure her son will ever recover or finish school or feel any sense of justice. Justice for my son would start with somebody, just one person from the district saying, we are so sorry for what we have done. We are so sorry that we hurt your child and we did it needlessly, but nobody will ever just admit what happened and say they're sorry. So Isaac spent two years not going into a school building, but now he's back going to a middle school in Seattle, but it is still very tough for him. He told me personally that every single day he gets depressed when he goes to school. As for Seattle Public Schools, they told us BF Day is following the law and their staff is trained in special techniques to avoid the use of isolation and restraint. So we're not sure, you know, why those numbers continue that way when they have been trained, but that's what's happening. I get the sense this is not the end of your series. No, we're definitely following what's going on in Olympia right now because a lot of people think this comes down to money. We need more money for more training. Okay. Thanks, Susanna. Jeez.